Hi, I'm Wendy, and today you'll see me painting a picture of apple blossom with an experimental wet into wet background. Um, it's not a simple step by step, but I will use lots of watercolour techniques, which I hope will be informative for beginners and also for more experienced painters. This is the reference photograph that I used. Um, it's apple blossom. I took the photograph last year. It's not quite time for blossom this year. It wasn't my intention to copy it, but to use some of the elements of it that I particularly liked in my painting. I used minimal masking fluid this time, um, just some dabs in the centre of the flowers where the stamens are. I'm wetting the area around the flowers. Um, normally I, I would probably just use clean water, but so you can see it, I've, um, I've just tinted the water with a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple. I worked wet into wet in the whole area around the blossom. This first wetting with water or first light wash should be very wet and then stronger mixes of colour are dropped in. Because the flowers themselves are dry, then the paint shouldn't run into those areas. At this stage you can paint over the twigs and the branch because um, they're going to be a lot darker than the background wash. Here we have a slightly speeded up version of the next stage of the wet into wet process. You can see the background um, washers are still very wet. And uh, here is some information about the colours that I've used. Um, I've done some swatches for you and you can see how I've made the greens, which is um, a mixture of ultramarine with lemon yellow and raw sienna. the final stage of the background wet into wet process, I'm adding some even stronger greens here, um, especially around the flowers so that we can get some contrast there with the light colours against the dark. Again, I've done some swatches for you. While the paint is still wet, I'm putting cling film over the painting. And this is left on until the paint is dry and gives some very interesting texture and shapes in the background washers. It is very experimental. You never know what effects you will get and some work better than others. I was quite pleased with this one. I would have preferred the centre greens to be a little bit darker. I think what must happen is the, the cling film presses onto the paint and spreads it um, and this results in a paler colour than you might expect. I'm just doing a little bit of tidying up here and um, I've put in the background behind the, um, the centres of the flowers. You can see that I've mixed a light bluey purple for the shadow areas and um, I'm keeping the edges soft by just touching them with a damp clean brush. At the end of this painting, the pencil lines you can see will be rubbed out and each petal will not be separated by those lines but by the change in tone provided by the shadow areas. So it's very important to remember this when you're applying the paint. I've explained this step in more detail in a previous video called Painting Snowdrops and um, I've put a link above and in the description box below.
Other colours in the background could be added to the purple mix. And here I'm painting the flower buds with a mixture of um, crimson alizarin and cadmium red. I painted the second flower while the shadow's on it in exactly the same way as I did the first one. And what I'm doing now is painting the branch and using a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. I didn't like that middle bit, it just didn't seem right. Um, it's quite easy to change areas like that. If they're damp, um, just dab them out with a bit of tissue. If they're, if they're dry, then damp them and do the same thing. Don't be frightened of changing watercolour. It's, um, it's not as permanent as you might think. I must have used about a number six brush, I think, for the small branch. Um, but now, doing the little twigs that are on there, I've, um, I've changed and I'm using a rigger brush. Um, it's very easy to use. Um, tend to make the strokes growing the way that the twigs are actually growing, as you can see. And dotting it around a little bit, just to give a little bit of movement and a little bit of interest in the twiggy areas. When you're painting in watercolour, you'll find lots of uses for cut up bits of credit card. Um, and here I'm just adding some texture to the, uh, to the bark on the twig by just dragging the corner of the plastic up through the paint. I added a few more little twigs and um, what I'm doing here is putting a few marks on to stand for little leaves that are starting to grow. Um, I thought the twigs looked a little bit dead. So I wanted to give them a little bit more life by putting a few marks on there. And a little bit of splattering to add some interest and movement doesn't come amiss. Whoops, we all do that sometimes. Really didn't want that dark colour there. So damp the area and dab with some kitchen towel and there we are. There was quite a lot of pink colour in the blossom, so um, what I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of um, crimson alizarin to parts of the petals and then softening it with some clear water. It's time to start painting the centre of the flower now and um, if you look at the reference photograph that I'm using, you can see there are some lovely cast shadows of the stamens on the bottom two petals and that's what we're going to paint now.
When the cast shadows were thoroughly dry, then I rubbed off the masking fluid. You can see that the pencil lines were rubbed off as well and um, what we're left with is the petals separated by the different tones of the shadows, um, which is looking quite nice I think. And now to add some yellow and orange to stand for the tops of the stamens. At this stage I thought the centres of the flowers looked a little bit dull so I got some um, white gouache and just put some little dabs of, um, of white on there. I also felt that the little leaves that I'd done were a bit too dark and so I mixed some, I think it was probably a lemony yellow, a very light green with some white gouache and I lightened up the background with these little marks that you can see me doing now and I think they work really well. And this is really what painting is all about. Um, you don't always make the best decisions and the best marks first time around and you've got to adapt your ideas as you go along. Here I'm just putting a few very dark green marks next to the light ones just to make them stand out that little bit more. I do love painting flowers in this loose experimental way and I hope you'll give it a go. I'll end the video by showing you some similar work I did recently of blossom with three different backgrounds worked in the same way.